Hello everyone, I'm CJ Werleman. Don't forget to click the subscribe button below and we kindly ask you please help keep our show going and growing by supporting my journalism at patreon.com slash CJ Now let's get into it. Islam is not only the world's fastest growing religion, having grown from 1.6 billion followers in 2013 to 2 billion today, but it will also be the world's largest religion by 2050, the year the total Muslim population will exceed 3 billion people. And there's absolutely nothing these guys can do about it. Not him, nor him, and certainly not her. Because Islam is proving to be an unstoppable force. And not because it's being spread forcibly, but because the Prophet Muhammad made it easy to understand. But what many people tell me is that they find Islam much more simpler than Christianity. So for example, they'd say, look, uh, in Christianity, you guys have to believe in a trinity. You know, there's one God who exists as three persons, but they're not three gods, or they're one God, but different persons, and, and that's kind of complicated. In Islam, we have it simple. There is just one God who exists as one person. Obviously, Islam will continue to grow at a steady and predictable rate in Muslim-majority countries. But what I find really fascinating is how the religion is growing in countries where Muslims represent a tiny minority of the population. I'm talking about Japan, South Korea, Mexico, and many others. Because what makes these countries captivating case studies is the way in which their respective Muslim populations are growing organically and not by immigration. It's important to tell these stories because we counter Islamophobia by promoting a deeper understanding of Islam. Because yes, while it remains the world's fastest growing religion, it also remains the least understood. But we start with South Korea where the Muslim population has grown to 200,000, which is a remarkable achievement given Islam was banned in the country until as recently as 1910, when Korea pursued an isolationist policy. It wasn't until the 1950s when Islam was introduced to the Korean people by members of the Turkish military, who came to fight alongside South Korean soldiers during the Korean War. If they ask to help us again in Korea, we go. To help you, of course, I'm 88, but that's what we like to do. I mean, how can anybody not love that guy? Well, South Koreans love him too, as they do all Turkish people, which is why the two countries have forged an incredibly close bond over the past 70 years. This relationship has allowed Islam to flourish. Watch this Korean woman explain how she became a Muslim. 근데 제가 공부를 하면서 아랍 역사를 공부하다 보니까 자연스럽게 이슬람 역사까지 이렇게 공, 알게 됐거든요. 근데 당시에 좋은 책이 별로 없어서 공부하는 데꽤 애를 먹었었어요. 뭐 인터넷을 뒤져도 한국어로 된 좋은 정보 같은 것도 별로 없었고 그래서 이슬람 성원에도 이제 제가 많이 방문하고 그러면서 어, 무슬림들하고 교류도 하고 그렇게 이슬람에 대해서 좀 알게 된 계기가 되었죠. <웃음> 네. Her story is typical of the Korean Muslim experience. But since converting to Islam in 2007, Bora Song has become somewhat of an Instagram star with more than 180,000 followers. And she uses her social media influence to help Koreans better understand Islam. When Koreans aren't learning Islam from Muslims like Bora Song, they are converting to the religion after working or traveling through the Middle East or nearby Muslim majority countries, Indonesia and Malaysia. There are many paths to the top of the mountain, so to speak. Korean citizens, they are very, how can I say, interest to what understand about Islam. In case of Seoul Central Masjid in, we can say maybe every year, the number of embraced Muslim, new Muslim, I mean, more than 100 persons. Sadly, many Koreans continue to have big misunderstandings about Islam, mostly because local media began linking the religion to terrorism in 2007. The year 23 Korean missionaries were kidnapped by the Taliban. Two of whom were killed before the South Korean government reached a deal for their release. The saga dominated media headlines for weeks, creating a negative impression about Islam that persists today. Earlier this year, Muslim students faced local backlash after building a mosque on campus grounds. 
I'm here as a representative of the KNU Muslim Students Community and the community is comprised of more or less 150 Muslim students. This place is not some new place for us because we have been praying here uh, from past seven years and now like after feeling the need for it because the Muslim students are larger in number so they were not able to pray properly in the previous place so we uh, started the construction of this place. You can see why anti-Islamophobia activists including us must do more to dispel misunderstandings about Islam in Korea. We now turn to South Korea's neighbor to the west the island nation of Japan where Islam has experienced exponential growth during the past 20 years. In fact, the total Muslim population in the Asian country has doubled in the past decade, from 110,000 in 2010 to 230,000 in 2019, with native Japanese converts accounting for roughly 25% of the Muslim population. This growth is matched by the number of mosques being built across the Japanese archipelago. According to multiple scatter reports throughout the last two decades, back in 1970, there were only two mosques in Japan. In 2001, the number increased to 24. In 2017, the number was 90. And currently, there are 115 mosques in the country. A direct evidence of exponentially greater growth of Islam in Japan. What really makes Japan stand out as a host to a minority Muslim population is the near total absence of Islamophobia. Remarkably, Muslims are welcome to practice their faith in accordance with Islamic principles, even in public. What most Muslims should know about life in Japan and living in Japan as a Muslim is that it's extremely uh, comfortable to live as a Muslim, even more so than uh, many Muslim countries. The reason I say that is because I don't see any restrictions uh, on practicing my religion. Living in Japan as a Muslim, we have mosques, uh, we have halal food, and there is a large Muslim community, actually, we can hang out with, we can talk to. So I think we feel quite comfortable living in Japan as a Muslim. Our final stop on this short tour around the world is Mexico where the Muslim population has grown from 50,000 in the early 1990s to 120,000 today, which is astonishing in such a devoutly conservative Christian country. Curiously, the village of San Cristobal in the state of Chiapas has been home to a Muslim majority since a Spanish Muslim missionary visited there in 1994. <laughs> que yo pues prácticamente no entendía y eso fue lo que llamó, me llamó la atención invité a mi papá, a mi mamá, a mis tíos, primos, abuelos eh, gente que conozco de infancia, los llevé y afortunadamente pues todos se hicieron musulmanes y ahí es donde empezó a crecer la comunidad Today, Islam has not only become the fastest growing religion in Mexico but also the fastest growing among Latin American migrants in the United States their values tend to be conservative values. They have a high respect for Jesus, who you know we say is, is a prophet in Islam. They have a high respect for the mother of Jesus, for Mary. So there's that kind of connection with the religion and the idea of God and also love for God. Notably, Islam offers Latin Americans a cultural familiarity that stretches back to the Moors in Spain. Latinos soon reconnect with a hidden past. They say, oh, Islam is not really that foreign to us. Islam is us, is part of us. 4,000 words from Spanish come from Arabic. Camisa, pantalón, tomate, salada. Muslims in Mexico still face discrimination, however, because of the way in which North American media has linked Islam with terrorism. But to overcome these misconceptions, Latino Muslim organizations have launched a number of initiatives aimed to promoting a better understanding of Islam among the majority Christian population, with groups such as Islam in Spanish coordinating mosque tours and the like, all of which is helping to break down barriers and counter Islamophobia. As you can see, Islam continues to grow rapidly and in unexpected places. Anyway, that's my time for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ We can't produce, sustain and grow the show without your help and we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, wherever you are and stay blessed.